truth or people with something to hide. Welcome back to True News. I'm Rick Wiles. When it became evident in 2007 that dark, sinister forces were propelling an unknown Illinois politician to run for the presidency of the United States of America, True News began to investigate and expose the unexplainable, mysterious past of Barack Hussein Obama and his close association over many years with known domestic terrorists, dangerous extremists, radicals, and communists. True News has been in the forefront of the battle to penetrate the news media blackout about Obama's true identity, such as the fact that he has operated for decades with another name, Barry Sotoro. Whatever you call this imposter in the White House, Barry Sotoro, Barack Obama, the Mac Daddy, the presidential pimp, the Chicago street hustler, He is a man without a past. People with money and clout have assisted Obama in covering up his earlier years. My guest today is a young family man, a Christian, who recently stumbled upon startling information about Barack Obama. For privacy and security purposes, I will not reveal his name or location. I will simply refer to him as Al. He is a professional debt collector. A client hired him to locate a debtor and collect the money. In the course of tracking down the debtor, he unexpectedly found Michelle Obama's name. As he pursued the connection, the trail got darker and more sinister. Now, for the record, this man, Al, voted for Barack Obama in 2008. He is not a partisan opponent of Barack Obama. He is an American citizen who is outraged that Obama lied to him and the nation about his true identity. Now, this is the first time this information has been broadcast on radio or TV. You and I are hearing it together for the first time. So let's bring Al onto the program and let him tell us what he discovered about this lying scoundrel in the White House. Al, welcome to True News. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, Okay, so uh, by profession, you're a debt collector, and you were working on a a case. You were trying to get information about an individual who owed money to um, uh, companies, and uh, somehow... Somehow Barack Obama came into this story. Uh, tell us how this all started. Well, yes, and yes, sir. Actually, it was um, it was on one of the nights that um, that I actually choose, um, you know, to go ahead and do my skip tracing, you know, because as part of my business, you know, we have to um, what's skip you know, we tracing? Have to verify the names and addresses of our debtors. What, what's what's skip tracing? Um, skip tracing is a means by 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 which you know. Um, we actually ascertain, you know, the location, names, addresses, um, you know, verify social security numbers, um, verify previous addresses, verify friends, relatives, you know, of the individuals that, um, you know, that, that were actually skip tracing, you know, you know for, for, for the debt. Okay. So the, the first process is to make sure that the person you are zeroing in on is the actual debtor that you want. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. So you the, the, so you were working on uh, another case involving another individual, and uh, was this indiv- did this individual live in Washington or Chicago? How what's the connection? Chicago. Chicago. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. Pick up the story. Sure. Sure. And um, so what I was doing was, you know, obviously, you know, when when I, when I couldn't find a relative, you know, new phone number or current phone number, you know, for the, for the individual, you know, then, then you start backtracing. And, um, you know, so you start, you know, through, you know, through the software, you know, you start hitting the database that has information for their addresses, their phone numbers, their relatives, you know, the associates of the same address, you know, so forth and so on. And then all of their information, you know, is, is compiled and then it, it's pulled. You know, we call it, you know, you know pulling, pulling the data. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when I was pulling this data, um, off of Everett, <laughs> off of Everett Avenue, you know, there, there in Chicago. Um, lo and behold, um, you know, Michelle Obama's name pops up, and um, so I, you know, so I, 
in the middle of the night, you know, when you're doing these things, you know, you just you just really don't have time, you know, because you don't you kind of don't want to lose track. So I, I just kept on going. And um, now, did but, did you know, Michelle I, Obama's name come up as a, as a neighbor of this debtor? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back in back in the nineties, back in the nineteen nineties. All right. And um, so anyway, so so when as I was finished, I you know I I clicked back, you know, just out of curiosity, you know, I clicked on her name, and uh, and then you know, obviously you know Barack Obama pulled up, and then his alias pulled up as well, you know, that was attached to his social security number. What do you mean his alias? Yes, sir. Um, when when individuals um, apply for anything or you know sign a sign a form, sign an application. Um, Whatever, pretty much, they use a name. You know, it's associated with that address and that social security number. Mm-hmm. And um, apparently, at one time, as of 2009, actually, as of November 2009, um, the alias Bonnell Harrison J. or Harrison J. Bonnell was actually used with Barack Obama's social security number and his address of 5046 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60615. Harrison J. Burnell. Bunnell, B O U N E L, B O N, B O U N E L. Harrison, Harrison J. J. Bonnell. Uh huh. Or the alias Harrison J. Bonnell. I've never heard this. I thought you were going to say Barry Satoro. No, sir. No, sir. Um, actually, I looked up Barry Satoro, <laughs> and I couldn't find it. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And what's the what's the street address again? 5046 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60615. And actually at the time, I didn't even know what, what his, what his home, home, home address was. So all this to me was like, you know, hitting me, you know, just like a brick wall. I didn't even know. I, this is new to me. I have never heard the name Harrison J. Bunnell. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that was the irony. The, that was the first anomaly that, that I discovered because it's sharing Barack Obama's Social Security number and his home address and the home phone number as well. Okay, so the Harrison J. Bonnell, it's not just that that Harrison J. Bonnell is connected to the address where Michelle and Barack Obama live. You you could say, okay, somewhere out there there is a Harrison J. Bonnell who lived there at some time and got his mail at 5046 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago. But you're saying that the name Harrison J. Bonnell shares the same Social Security number as Barack Hussein Obama? Yes, sir, the exact one. But because what I did was, um, in order to double-check these things, I have a way that I can backtrack it. And um, so when I took the Social Security number by itself and entered it into you know, my, my search screen, it, it reverted back and it pulled up Barack H. Obama, Harrison J. Bunnell, or Bunnell Harrison J. at the same time. It, showed, it gave me two results for the same social. Okay, so what happened then? Well, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm looking at it. And I said, "Well, from my own experience, when when you have multiple names with one social security number, I look at it, and well, I mean, that, you know, that's the way, way that we're taught really is to look at it as a case of st- either stolen identity, okay, or you know, someone using his social, or he let somebody use that social, okay. That's what I was looking at. So actually, I look at it from from the standpoint of proving the anal- you know, proving the the anomaly, you know, not taking it for granted that it existed, I had to prove it. Okay, and um, so when I clicked on Bonnell Harrison J's relatives, Michelle Obama pulled up. Oh boy, her name pulled up as a relative of Bonnell Harrison J, and it showed up with her social, her spouse's, you know. Um, her cell phone numbers and the address, uh, five zero four six South Greenwood, as of October two thousand and ten. So, when when that happens, that that tells me one thing, okay, that whoever this Bonnell Harrison J person is or Harrison J Bonnell, when they associated themselves with Michelle Obama, and the five zero four six South Greenwood Avenue address. So I clicked on the the home address. I clicked on the um, you know the five zero four six South Greenwood, and when I pulled up that information, it showed me two separate owners of the house, not the Obamas. 
Okay, so so uh, the house that Obama's living in or was living in, 5046 South Greenwood, it's not owned by the Obamas. Who owns the house? Um, a judge by the name of Jane L. Stewart. Her name, she's a um, circuit court judge in Chicago, and she's also an Obama contributor. And a Mr. Harvey Weinberg, who is a, a partner in the firm that handles Obama's taxes. How about that? His tax lawyer. Uh, yes. <laughs> His accountant, actually. His tax accountant owns the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As per my um, national property search, and it is with the um, accounting firm of Weinberg, Solomon, Howell, and Shane. Weinberg, Solomon? Weinberg, Solomon, Howell, and Shane. And, and what was the, the circuit court judge's name? Jane L. Stewart. And so when I did a backtrack search on her name, I actually keyed her name into my, to my database and it pulled up her owning 5046 South Greenwood. And does she spell Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T or U-A-R-T? No, S-T-U-A-R-T. Oh, okay. And she shows up at the same house? Yes, sir, on a, on a, on a, on a different search. Okay. On a separate search that I did on her All name. right. What else did you find? Well, um, the house itself has had, um, let me get to my record real quick. I have to pull this up and excuse me for that. The house itself has had set six different PIN numbers associated with the property itself. What do you mean, PIN so numbers? What? what do you mean? It's a property identification number, and it's a number that is, that is assigned to a piece of property. And as per the Cook County Recorder of Deeds, it's a number that never changes. However, you know, the house itself has had six um, property identification numbers associated, you know, within the past um, maybe six years. Okay. You're saying as far as Cook County... Um, to say a clerk of court or register that the pen, the property identification number never changes, even though the owners change. Absolutely correct, sir. Yes, sir. It, but in this case, it changed number, six times. Yes, sir. It's changed from um, six times from zero um, from two zero one one zero two five zero 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 to to the three seven number, which is not registered with Cook County yet it's registered with the treasurer's and assessor's office. Well, you would need somebody who's corrupt inside Cook County government to do something like that, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As That's probably Cook hard County, to find, a corrupt Cook County government official. <laughs> well, the irony is um, it was verified to me by, you know, by Cook County, and um, the woman that I was, that I was speaking with um, told me that everything kind of trickles down from, from the Cook County Recorder of Deeds because you, re- you, know, you have to record your deed first. Mm-hmm. Before you can even do any, do any assessments on it, you know, because you can't you can't do an assessment on a property that doesn't have a deed or a title to it. D- did the property actually change ownership? When you said that there were six different pen numbers in what? What did you say? Six or seven years? Yes, sir. In, in, in six or seven years, and the answer to that is no. So, the the pen numbers changed, but the owners didn't. Um, is absolutely that, more. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well, then um, that's a deliberate attempt to to cover up uh, and confuse uh, any investigators. Yes, sir. What what it, what it is called? It's called a multi layered um, real estate finance transaction. That's what it's called. And the irony is is that William Maselli, who was you know obviously you know, was Obama's mentor, and you know. Uh, that's one of the specialties, as as per his law firm. Well, why would they do that? If if, if what, I mean, what 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 what, you, what would they be trying to hide? What they're trying to do. Remember now, what happened was they created a trust. Okay, well, really, the trust already exists. It's a Northern Trust Company, trust number one zero two zero nine. Okay, and in two thousand and five. Let me get to my, let me get to that point where this happened. Um, in 2005, a loan was was acquired from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac for 1.32 million dollars. Okay, 
and it was acquired by the Northern Trust Company for the Northern Trust Company, trust number 10209, for property PIN number 20111115034, because PIN number 20115026 when they, in April of 2005, they did a release for zero dollars to pin number 034. And this was done by the previous owner, Frederick Wandesford. And he, and he did it to, to create pin number 034. And this pin number lasted for eight months, okay, from April of 2005 to December of 2005. It lasted for only eight months. During this period of time is when the crime actually took place, okay? Because the um, Frederick Wandesford sold the house to Northern Trust Company, trust number 1020. It lasted for only eight months. During this period of time is when the crime actually took place, okay? Because the um, Frederick Wandesford sold the house to Northern Trust Company, trust number 10209, as a grantor. The grantee is the Northern Trust Company of a mortgage for $1.32 million from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Unbelievable. Yes, sir, it is. And, the, and now the one thing that, that I really found um, to be, to be the, the pinpoint of the crime itself was that as recorded June second, two 2005, mind you, Less than, th less, than three, well, less than 13 days before the so-called purchase of the property by the Obamas was that there was no index legal description for the property and no index property information as per you know, document 0515339067 for the property. There was no indexes at all. And that what that was was an ABI, which is an assignment of beneficial interest from the Northern Trust Company to the Northern Trust 10209. Mm -hmm. So basically they snuck it in there. And that's when they created PIN number 20111115037, which is not recorded at the Kitt County Recorder of Deeds, but it is recorded at the Treasurer's Office and at the Assessor's Office. It doesn't exist as per the CCRB. So once again, we have a deliberate attempt to uh, hide uh, yes, sir. ownership and to confuse yes, sir. anyone on the trail. Yes, sir. If if you don't know what triggers to look for, you're not, you're not going to find it. But but in my, in my line of work, you know, as a, as a debt collector, as a skip tracer, I know what, you know, what triggers to look for. Well, if, if you didn't know, if, if, if Barack and Michelle Obama were just ordinary folks and and um uh, you were uh, on their trail f for debts that they owed and you came across uh you know this uh you know these uh bizarre transactions what would that say to you it's real estate fraud real estate fraud because yes sir because when i when i examined um, Barack Obama's income tax for 2009 mm -hmm. um it's a uh, it's a 58-page document, okay? On page three, it lists, you know, um, federally how much he paid for his real estate tax, you know, for his home. Mm -hmm. okay? On page 57 of the same PDF, you know, the actually, actually I, got, I got that from the White House, you know, from whitehouse.gov. On page 57, this is state of Illinois filing for his real estate taxes, which shows what I do with that document. It shows on page three that um, he paid he paid twenty two thousand four hundred fifty six dollars on a one point six five million dollar house. Okay, and it also shows you know write the pin index number for the property listed above. It's blacked out on his Illinois tax return. It's blacked out. Okay. It's been it's redacted. Yes, sir. Why? Why would they? Re why was it redacted? 
because they didn't want people knowing which, what, what the actual PIN number was to the property. And it was electronically done because I actually I blew it up in my computer to 600 times you know, its normal size so I could actually see the, the, the pixels in it. And that way I could tell that it was actually electronically blacked out because the edges are perfect. So, and on his 2010 income tax returns for the state of Illinois, that, um, those, that page is not present where you, we're supposed to provide the PIN number for your taxes. So one question that I have is why didn't they do that under 2010 taxes? You know, when, you, when, when you're lying, you, you really have to just keep working hard all the time to cover up all the lies. Yes, sir. One lie, one lie generates another lie. Mm -hmm. And when I con, you know, and you know, re, you know, going back to the pin numbers, when I had spoken to Kit kind of recorded these, they, they they could not explain to me why the property itself had so many pin numbers. They didn't, they didn't give me an explanation. They, they 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 referred me to the treasurer's and the assessor's office. I am still scratching my head over Harrison J. Bonell. H have you come across this name any place else? No, sir, I have not. It does not exist. Um, the polls that I did for his Social Security number for the uh, 0426844425 number came up as no hits. Um, the, social, I, the Social Security number that you have, is it the same Social Security number that um, other private investigators have come up with? It's identical. This is the Connecticut Social Security number? Yes, sir. This is the invisible Social Security number. It's the 0426844425. And I can, say, I can say what the number is because, I mean, it, it's all over the Internet anyway. So it's public you yeah. know, knowledge what his Social Security number is. So I don't, I'm not at risk for yeah. you know, divulging any Let's say, personal information. Say it again. But, say it slowly. Sure. Zero four two six eight four four two five, and I actually triple checked it on the twelfth, just literally four days ago. You know, with my with my master file, and I did a death master file that came up no hits. And I also did a search by you know SSN index search, and um, it came up no hits as well. Okay, uh, Obama's. Social Security number that he's fraudulently using, which belongs to a dead man in Connecticut. Is that correct? No, sir, because I actually researched that myself. Or is, okay. or do I have that confused? Or is it with a, a teenager? What's the story? Where did that Social Security number come from? Um, there are so many stories out there. I can't pinpoint the exact. Um, okay. You know the the, the exact. Um, I, I call them urban legends. You know, I can't, you know. Okay. But what we do know, what we do know, Al, is that Social Security number 04268-4425 was issued to a Connecticut resident. Is that correct? Um, as per my records, it doesn't exist because there's no hits to it. You're saying okay. that the number doesn't even exist? Yes, sir. As per my, as per my, as per my polls, because I actually did an, an SSN search, which is a Social Security number search. And it returned zero hits. Okay, now do you have access to the same databases that a private investigator would have? Uh, mine are actually better. Really? Because I, I yes, yeah, so I pull from every database across the country for, you know to collect on my debts. I mean, I can I even have pulls from you know from California, you know California does California Criminal Corporation Civil Licenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even do um, ABC um, pulls. Okay, but you're saying. The Social Security number is 0426844425. Is this a fraudulent Social Security number? That's my question. Yes. How do you know it's fraudulent? Because it came up with no hits, but yet he's using it with an alias. Okay, I'm going to say this real loud and real plain uh, for the FBI <laughs> and for... Uh, federal prosecutors, the U.S. Justice Department, if, if there is such a thing as justice anymore in the U.S. Justice Department, because it looks like a big joke now, uh, the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, which apparently doesn't investigate anything anymore, uh, for the uh, U.S. prosecutors, the U.S. attorneys of each state, the U.S. Attorney of Illinois, we're going to say this on the radio. Barack Hussein Obama is a criminal. He is a pimp. He is a street hustler, a Mac daddy. 
This guy is a fraud. He is a criminal. He is fraudulently using the Social Security number 0426844425. He also uses, apparently, the alias name Harrison J. Bonnell, in addition to the name Barry Satoro. Just how many names does this imposter in the White House have? That's my question well, to the FBI. And I would like the FBI to get off their butt and do what the taxpayers are paying them to do. Investigate and arrest criminals who are breaking federal laws. I'm fed up with the FBI's unwillingness to do its job. Now, we're saying it on the radio. Obama, whatever his name is, Barry Sotoro, is a lying conniving imposter who needs to be handcuffed and taken to a federal detention center and processed and fingerprinted and indicted by a federal jury. And I'm just wondering how long the wimps in Washington are going to hide and refuse to deal with with the criminal who is in the White House. Go ahead, Al. I just wanted to add that uh, along, with the, along with the searches for, um, for his name, I also came across 58 addresses from across the country. For Obama or, or Harrison J. Bonnell? Uh, for Barack and Michelle Obama. 58 addresses? Uh, yes, sir, in, in other states. I, I, I did a state-by-state -state search. I literally started in California and worked my way east. Are these properties that he allegedly owned or rented? Well, um, the properties are owned by other people or, or rented by other people. But yet his name, Barack Obama, with, another, with different Social Security numbers are attached to these properties, and I found three with Michelle Obama on them. Oh, wait a minute. Different Social Security numbers? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's two of them that Barack Obama is using in Illinois other than his. I mean, it's hit, the one he's using now, the 042, the, the current one, and then another one that begins with a 6526. And that belongs to a man and a woman who are using the same Social Security number. And in what state are they Byron, in? Ingleside, Illinois. Are, are any connection to Obama? Well, um, I couldn't... Uh, you know, directly connect them to that, to, to be quite honest and frank with you, because I I didn't want to get too involved, <laughs> um, you know, more more than what I am now, because there's 58 addresses and hundreds of names attached to those addresses. I mean, what are we going to uh, have to do here, a citizen arrest because the FBI won't do its job? Well, what we can do, <laughs> you're going to think that you're going to think I'm crazy. No. But what we can do, one of the names attached to these addresses is Tony Tiger. And Steve Young, Kamora Simmons, Mary Gross, Bobby Womack, Tyra Banks, um, Nick Newman, um, Tom Jones. What, what's, what's, what's your What's your suggestion? What do we do? Well, um, all these names were attached to these addresses between 2004 and 2009. So I think we can put two and two together on those. Mm hmm. Especially the ones in Illinois. How do we force? How do we force the federal bureaucrats to do their job? Well, they're not going to. Well, how do we bring this man to justice? Someone's going to have to have the courage in government, you know, to use the information that 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 we have. I mean, my information has actually been verified. And also corroborated, you know, you know, by another person who, you know, is a private investigator, and she has twenty years worth of experience in this business. Is that Susan? Uh, yes, sir. It is. It's nope. Susan Daniels. Yes. Okay. She's been a guest on the program. All right. Yes, sir. And um, initially, and if you know Susan like I do, you know that she's, um, you know that she's very thorough in everything she does. I mean, she even sent me evidence so. 
I could corroborate it from my findings, and a lot of, say about maybe 95% of it is a match. What were your thoughts about the um, digital birth certificate they put on the White House website? I made a better one over the weekend. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie to you. I actually put, I, I, I put my name and my, my signatures on everything. Uh huh. And um, this is what they did, okay? They, they took a background. Okay, which is which is a safety background. You know, it's a, it's a safety background. You know, you know, you know that they put on official documents. Okay, and um, actually, whenever I process checks, you know, for um, for my, for my clients, whenever I go to pay them, well, I use that security background, but mine's blue on my checks, and um, you know, instead of the green one, and I get those in, in blank sheets of paper. You know, from from the companies I get, you know, to you know to process my checks, you know, you know, for my, when I go to do my payouts. And um, what they did was they took a, a document and layered it on top of the you know the blank screen or on top of the blank page. And what they did was they just basically cut and pasted. You know, they they just basically you know cut and pasted, and then they did it transparent. So what you do is you know you take the um, you cut and paste the background, shrink it to fit. Take that background and move it over whatever you want it to cover. Then on top of that background, you put a text box. Inside of that text box, you key in what you, you type in what you want to type in, but remember you have to use the proper font. And the font that they used was actually, it's called a, um, oh, it's a typeset font. It's a carbon font is what it is. It's a carbon type font mm -hmm. is the font that they used. And I had to blow it up to like six to eight hundred percent in order to, so that way I could look at the um, the obvious, um, you know, the obvious pixels. Um, what when a when a when a computer does it, it does it differently, you know, than the way a typewriter does. Because you know how when you type, you know, with a manual typewriter like they did in the sixties, mm -hmm. um, you know how sometimes a letter might come up or down, or the spacing might be off, but you know, between the letters, the spacing on the letters are identical. Okay, mm -hmm. and you can actually see the 90 degree right angles in the S's and the T's and stuff like that. And then you can also see the pixel marks, as because you know, you, know you know how you make a like let's say the letter U or an S. Okay, mm -hmm. you're going to have a 90 degree angle at, at the corners, you know, for the S's because you know that 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 makes the end. And so you're going to get a straight line to make the top, and then to make the curves, they use they use separate pixels to form the round edges. What you're saying, yep. Al, is if if Obama were uh, simply a regular citizen and he was under investigation for a criminal act, any good criminal investigator, this would be a slam dunk to put this guy in prison. He couldn't make bail. He couldn't make bail. <laughs> Listen, Obama couldn't get a job as a janitor in a federal building or a defense contractor. And no, it would it would it would be impossible. Now, as a computer, as a community organizer, yeah. Okay. That's the people who, I look for. Who who do you think this guy is? Is 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 he just a common street hustler who's jive talked his way into the White House? Is he, um, is he, uh, um, is he part of the Chicago mafia? Is he no. is he a foreign no. plant? No. Who is he? I kind of feel sorry for him, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Uh, it, it, look at the way that look at the way that this man grew up. Okay. Um, you saying he doesn't goes, know anything else goes, other than lying? That's about the extent of it. Um, look at his mother. Okay. She had her own. She had her own social philosophy on, you know, on. Social, socialism, or personal. Yeah, it's communism. called communism, right? And um, and his father was the same. I mean, you know, they, they met in the sixties, you know, and you know, whatever college that they were going to. I'm not even know what college they went to. And um, you know, so she looked at at his father, you know, from the standpoint of, well, you know, he thinks like I do. You know, I'm radical, and you know, let me go and do this, and I'm going to hook up with this guy. I like him. Okay, and obviously, you know, Barack Obama's daddy, you know, he said, oh, she, you know, she's good looking, I'm going to hook up with her. You know, that's basically what happened. 
and then you, then, you, then Barack Obama's born, you know, and and, and I've dispelled the rumor that he's not a Cuban or anything like that. He's, you know, the, he was born by Barack Obama Sr. and his mama, okay? And, um, but the thing is, though, this is what I think happened, okay? She followed, she, she went to Africa with him to visit his family, okay? Oh, Barack was born over there. They come back here, they go through all the rigmarole and paperwork to, you know, they say that he was born here. Because when she left, remember back in the 60s, whenever you left in the United States for a period of time, when you came back, you started to prove that you were an American. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see what I'm saying? Sure. Mm -hmm. You had started to prove that you're an American. So well, that was the thing that they were having them to do, you know, was, was, was prove that they were, that she was an American and her son was an American. But everybody knows that his father, Barack Obama Sr., was a British national. Because at the time, Britain, uh, Kenya was actually, what was it, a colony of, of Great that, Britain? That's right. And World Now Daily has brought out through uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi that, uh, you know, back in the 60s, the U.S. State Department Immigration Office uh, had questions about Barack Obama Sr. Uh, they said oh, they don't know how many, that. they didn't know how many wives he had. They, they, um, Harvard wanted him booted out of the country. Because of his polygamy, because of his uh, uh, lack of financial support, because of the questions about Barack Hussein Obama. So you're saying he's the son of a liar. Yes. And that remember, though, that that's all he knows. So he's growing up without parents, you know, having to rely on, on his grandparents, you know, God, you know, God rest their souls. And um, so, who was, so who, who, was, who, was, who was his mentor in Hawaii? A communist. Right, Marshall so Davis. I, so See, I think Al, I think you're being too nice on the guy. I think the guy is a communist plant. I think he was put here to preside over the destruction of the Constitutional Republic. This is why the founding fathers wisely said that a president had to be a natural born citizen because the founding fathers actually feared that a foreign king would plant a young person in this country for the purpose of taking over the country. That was not a conspiracy theory to the founding fathers. They feared it. And and, and I believe that's exactly what is taking place with Barack I was Hussein Obama. Scared. I was scared half to death of what I found. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I was scared. Oh, this is deep. Uh, this is deep. This this this. This man did not do this by himself. He didn't come up with all these lies by himself. His his uh, he was taught. He was taught, but he's he's still being assisted. This Weinberg, this law firm. Come on, these people are involved in this cover up. There yes, there are sir. a lot of people who ought to go to prison. I this this well, is a this is a deep deep criminal conspiracy that's that's underway and it's been underway for many years to conceal the identity of this man who goes by the name Barack Hussein Obama. He is a criminal. He is a fraud. He is There's no doubt about it. He's, he's committed real estate fraud and tax fraud, not to mention the ethics violations that, that he's committed by having a, a, a contributor as a registered owner or, you know, or one that shows up. Even if, it show, even if they show up as an owner of the property, that is still... That is still a, 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 a an impropriety. Um, Al, I wish I had another half hour to keep this going. I'm I'm out of time. We've been talking for thirty minutes. Okay. Well, we have gone. I, I this is this is uh, incredible information. I would love to have you back. Um, you and I will stay in touch. Uh, I, I am not going to let go of this guy. I'm going to stay on it until the Mac Daddy is. Uh, in prison, he needs do you to. Want go me, do you want me to send you the addresses? Of FBI uh, Director James Comey has been fired. FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe has been fired. FBI General Counsel Jim Baker has been demoted, reassigned. FBI Director of Counter Deputy Director of Counterintelligence Peter Strzok has been demoted and reassigned. FBI Counsel Lisa Page demoted and reassigned. What did all these fired, demoted, and reassigned people do while they were in the Obama administration? 
They're the ones who ran the Clinton investigation, and they're the ones who launched an investigation into President Trump's campaign. And when they launched that investigation, what did they do? They took this dossier, dressed it all up, made it look like it was legitimate intelligence, took it to a secret court to get a secret warrant to spy on a fellow American citizen. And when they went to the court, they didn't tell them important facts, like who paid for the document. Didn't tell him the DNC and the Clinton campaign paid for it. Didn't tell him that the guy who wrote the document had been fired by the FBI. And yet they took it to a secret court to get a warrant to spy on a fellow American citizen loosely associated with the Trump campaign. And now we learn that they possibly paid informants to spy on the Trump campaign. When we... When you and I go to court, we have to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. They didn't do that when they took the dossier to the court, and now we learn that possibly they paid informants to spy on the Trump campaign. And never forget this fact. In all those text messages back and forth between Lisa Page and Peter Strzok, we have that one on September 2nd, 2016, where they say POTUS, President Obama, POTUS wants to know everything we're doing. And the operative word there is everything. That's a pretty darn big category. And we're supposed to believe, we're supposed to believe the Department of Justice can handle this. That's what they tell us. Don't worry. We can investigate ourselves. We can handle this. Trust us. We'll be just fine. Really? Think about this question. Can Rod Rosenstein oversee an obstruction of justice investigation into the firing of James Comey when he's the guy who wrote the memo recommending the firing of James Comey? So this, this res we've been pushing for 10 months for this, and I want to applaud Congressman Zeldin for bringing the resolution to the floor, and Chairman Meadows is exactly right. This should be brought to the floor. We should vote on it, and we should tell the DOJ we are sick and tired of the runaround we've been getting from you guys. It is time to have a special – if this fact pattern doesn't warrant a second special counsel, somebody tell me what does. <laughs> somebody tell me what does. So this is exactly what is needed, and I appreciate the gentleman's leadership, and I want – I want this, just like the chairman said, on the floor as, as quick as it possibly can get. And we can tell the American people we're going to do everything it takes to get answers to the questions that they have.